Welcome. Are you in the right place? You've already heard the talk name, so I won't have to double check that. You're here to try and learn how to use serverless technologies to make a development portfolio for yourselves. Um, so be here for that. Great. Uh, one quick bit of housekeeping for myself. Um, if that's your SSID, go away. Leave my talk. Please. Thank you. Um, you know who you are. Uh, if you don't know what this means, that's also fine too. Um, queer folks, you get free stuff now because of the person who was doing that. So if you want to talk to me privately after the chat, anything, I'll give you free prizes that I will be mentioning later on. So uh, say hi. Um, who am I really quick? Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Fernando. I am a solutions architect at Serverless Inc., which are the founders of the serverless framework. Um, that's a toolkit essentially to help build applications in a particular way that I'll be discussing in this presentation. Um, I also ate too many cookies before this presentation, so I'm worried I might be talking a little quickly. If for some reason you have a question or something that I'm saying goes too quickly, uh, this is going to be a very interactive discussion, so you're welcome uh, to call me out and say, hey, I have another quick question about this. You were saying something too fast or that I didn't understand. Um, I am a Python lover. I know, that doesn't make me very popular here. I'm a Node.js and a JavaScript novice, so my apologies to the expert in the room. Uh, whose skills far supersede mine. Um, I'm also a Pluralsight author, and I put my Twitter handle up there. If you have questions later about this talk, I'm going to try and respond to those too. All right, enough about me. Who are you? We're going to do a real quick activity today. Um, right now, I want you to think of a fun fact about yourself. Just quietly think of a fun fact. Everybody has a fun fact. If it's not about you, you're also welcome to think of a fun fact about tech if you don't want to share it about yourself. Um, then if you're able to, please just stand up, because it's right after lunch, and you've all been sitting down and really enjoying the uh, great food that we have here. Um, and we're going to just look for somebody nearby us, and we're going to share your name, uh, your pronouns, and that fun fact about yourself. So for example, if I were walking over here and wanted to say hi, I'd be like, hi, I'm Fernando, my pronouns are he, him, and a fun fact about myself is that I used to teach stage combat. Uh, that means I taught people how to fake fight on a stage like this uh, without hurting each other or anybody else. Um, so go ahead, let's try that. Everybody, if you can, please stand up. Um, this is a very, this will hopefully be a very interactive presentation. Um, say hi to somebody and then do something like this. Again. Raise your hand if you had a very particularly interesting fact about somebody else that you learned, just because I want to make this a very get-to-know-you kind of room. Raise your hand high. I love volunteers. In case, uh, yes, okay. Go ahead and go ahead and stand up. You have to, you have to say the fun fact about them. If this, are, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, we're going to share your fun fact and who you are. So please share. Oh, right over there. And then I'm Chris Lorenzo here, and I learned he is a 100% completionist in Breath of the Wild. Woo! All right. Nice to meet you, Chris. Thank you all for um, for indulging me. Uh, yes. So, uh, in, in case you were wondering why is all this participation happening, I hate participation. I have decided to bribe all of you. Um, 
anybody who participates is welcome to either tell me they participated on Twitter, follow like, me around as soon as I get off the stage in real life on Twitter, um, and then say, hey, I participated. And I will give you something on this list. Um, I have a few stickers. I have access to free courses that talk about these topics. And I might also be able to write a custom guide if you've got a question on something you're doing. I do that a lot. Um, I may or may not teach you stage comment depending on how much I trust you. So, um, the first question you're probably asking, or maybe not, if you already know what's going on, is what is serverless? This is some sort of buzzword, I don't understand it. Well, kind of continuing with the theme of this presentation, we have game time. So who thinks they know what serverless is, or something that serverless you know, might be described as? Raise your hand really high. Okay, right over there in the red, maroon, whatever color. Someone else's computer. I, I, you know, I would probably say that this is up there. I did not realize this is how the split screen would work, so we'll see. Up, 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 down, okay. Up, 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 okay, now you know all the answers, so this is really just, this is really not gonna work as well as I anticipated. Uh, I'll go up one, I'll go up one, and we can hopefully see three right there. I might skip over some of these now that you know. Okay, so not managing, not managing your own server. Uh, I'm going to give you that one. You got three. Uh, so you'll get a little prize that one. So yes, it's someone else's computer. Really, when you're using anything in the cloud, that really just means it's probably somebody else's problem to deal with, and hopefully they're doing a good job. Um, and in terms of serverless, one of the key principles is not having to worry about managing the server security, the scaling of your applications. If you're running a bunch of applications for a lot of different people, um, you need to get more capacity to do that, and also not having to deal with patching and maintenance on the server level. So congratulations, you'll get a prize. Okay, anybody else before I reveal all those answers that you already know now? Go ahead. Architecture of the configuration. Okay, architecture of the configuration. Can you see four right now? No. Okay. Oh, a little bit more. Okay. This will be interactive even more. Okay. So yes, uh, I'm going to kind of give you that one too because when it comes to serverless, you're really trying to focus on the application. Maybe you're doing some configuration um, and the, kind of focusing on that architecture, but you're not dealing as much with um, the infrastructure that's behind it. So you don't have to worry about, I need 12 servers of this size and they need to go up and down and when capacity changes, I'm going to need to make sure that my DevOps engineer knows how to change all that stuff around. So I'll give you that one too. And because you've already seen the first two, I'll just kind of go and revisit those. But don't worry, there will be other participation opportunities. Um, so the second point here um, is that typically you're dealing with managed cloud services. So you're paying somebody like Google Cloud or Azure or AWS to deal with their own services and provide you some sort of API that you can build your applications on top of. And part of this is called backends as a service, or BAS, just remember fish, I guess. Um, and you're going to use a lot of those to help build out the backends of your application. There's also another uh, portion which is kind of, which is also in the back end, but it's the compute portion that you're actually using called functions as a service or FAS. And that's called sometimes ephemeral compute. But what that really means is you run a piece of code and you don't really, you know, you don't really look at the place it was running later. Maybe it'll write some logs that you'll do somewhere else, but it's not some central server that you're running your code on that you have to go back to, debug, and deal with. So thank you to everybody who participated in, in today's demonstration. Now we'll uh, move on a little bit. So common fast options that you might look up, because that's the core of serverless computing, are all of those providers that I listed there and many others. Um, and I'll be using today AWS or Amazon Web Services, and uh, we'll look at how we can build an application on top of that. But that's kind of the why serverless aspect of this. So why a portfolio? Right? That sounds like maybe something an artist would have. Um, you're preparing for your, you know, your, your art school reviews or something, you're collecting your projects, that sounds great. Um, well, jobs can get boring um, and difficult. And uh, I worked, uh, in my own personal life, I've worked customer support, um, and nobody thought I could be a developer, nobody thought I could be an engineer, and it was frustrating. And it's hard to prove that to people and demonstrate that you can do stuff. So when you go into interviews, and you get in front of the interview panel and they ask you, what are you going to tell us about your skills? And you can't say anything because you, you're kind of like put on the spot all of a sudden. Well, having a portfolio is a great way to take what you've been working on, what you've learned, and actually put it into something tangible to show everybody all of these cool things that you are doing. And actually have them know what it is that you're doing, understand it, and have that showcase that you can reference for those days when you're just feeling 
a little bit underwhelmed about what you've done, you can always go and look back at that. Okay, so now we know kind of why we're here and what we're gonna do. Let's do a few quick disclaimers. Um, I assume some development experience here. I'm assuming maybe a little bit of knowledge. I'm always happy to answer questions about it. Um, I can't build something big in seven days because that may take a little longer. And you'll need to learn new things. Um, also, as a minor disclaimer, a few lines of Python were used in the making of this talk, so they, they told me I had to say that. Um, so what are we learning today? Well, we're gonna go through a few different days worth of learning. Day one, we'll be setting up our development environment. Day two, we'll be finding examples and templates of projects that we can use. We'll also, on day three, think about how we can come up with our own ideas uh, and build our own projects on day four, five, and six. And then showing off your project will be day seven, because that's also an important stage. Okay, so day one, setting up. We're gonna go through setting up, it's gonna take no time. Ready, we're all gonna do it. We're gonna install node in NPM. Congratulations, you've done that, so I'm not gonna do it right now. <laughs> we're gonna create an AWS account. Get a credit card, go we'll log on, fill out some forms, you're done. Um, we're also going to install the serverless framework with this command right here once we have npm installed. npm install serverless g. We'll get it installed globally so we can use it anywhere on our machine. Congratulations, you're done with the setup. That's really good. I'm proud of you. Um, so now we're going to go all the way to the demo. So uh, that's the hardest part. We just didn't build the setup. So now let's go ahead and try and switch. Um, so now I'm going to awkwardly move this just a little bit so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Um, and we're going to go through, no, I'm not just saying that, that's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> and we are going to go through just deploying our first, uh, our first serverless application as soon as I can see my mouse. Here we go. Okay, so I have VS Code just loaded up here, and I have those dependencies that I already mentioned. So all I have to do to actually get this project started is just type in serverless. I'm going to make this a bit bigger so that people for the back can see. And okay, this is awkwardly. There. Okay. I'll start that again so it doesn't cut off. All right. So there's no project detected. Do we want to start a new one? Sure. Let's do it. Um, we can pick a runtime, so Node or Python. And we can do that, and we'll give this project a name. Uh, let's call this Fun Demo Day. And then, all right. We created it. We added some files into this folder. Uh, we can also set up monitoring automatically with the uh, people that I work for and get some fun stuff set up there. So sure, let's say yes, because they want me to do that and I want to get paid. Um, and then <laughs> we will register for this. Okay, I'm going to say Fernando Demo Day Liberty, just so there's nobody else here who's taking my email address. I'll delete this later, so that would have All right, password. I have to make it strong so that it doesn't tell me it's not strong enough. And then... Awesome, now we have a new account. What this is gonna help us do is help us manage all of our deployments, different stages. It's gonna help us with CI, CD, and getting that application a little bit more um, robust later on as we keep going. So that's a fun way to do this uh, setup here. Now I would do this, but then I have to do some more setup steps, so I'm not gonna do it. All right, so we just prepped our first demo application here. So all that's really in here is three different files. There's a JS file, because we all like JavaScript. And inside this JS file, it's really just got, let's see, uh, really like 15 lines of real code. And all it does is it has uh, a function in there that processes an event, and an event is some arbitrary bit of data that's coming in, and we look at it and we decide what do we want to do with this? What do we want to return? What do we want to call other services with? Uh, and once we're done with that, we say, cool, we're done, and maybe we give some information back. Uh, and that's really all there is to this. In this particular case, it's just gonna say, Cool, we, we ran this and it's gonna give us that text back. But now if we actually wanna get this you know, somewhere deployed inside of the cloud and make it work, well, we already set up AWS in the AWS CLI, so all we have to do right now is actually just run serverless deploy, if I can see. And once we do that, oops, I'm actually already getting errors in my own time. Oh, that's why. So if we do this, we're going to get an error because right now, you see how I'm above the directory of fun demo day? What I have to do is I have to go into that directory. And then in there, we see the serverless.yml file. And the serverless framework sees, oh, you've got a serverless project you're working on. We know what to do with that. And once I run this command again, it's going to pick that up. And let's see what it's doing in the background just while this runs. I'm trying to get a little bigger. So what this handles for you, once you get all this set up, is it's going to package up your project, it's going to take your handler function and maybe any dependencies that you have for it, NPM libraries, other things like that. It's going to put that all in the same spot. And it's also going to turn your serverless.yml file, which we'll look at in just a second, into the architecture you need for your application inside of your cloud provider. 
So what that can mean is anything from deploying that single function up into the cloud, or maybe you want to make an API endpoint that you can share with everybody to get some data in and out, you can do that too. Um, and it takes a second to just create something called a, a stack, and in AWS there's some more concepts that are involved in that, but we don't really have to know them because this is handling it all for us um, until we break something, then you might have to know it. So, just claim it. Um, so what this does is it packages it all, up, it all up, it puts it up there, and then as soon as we're done with this and it's finished deploying, it's gonna give us back the information about the service that we just deployed. So if we have uh, an API service, it's gonna give us back the API endpoint. Um, but while this finishes deploying, let's take a quick look at serverless.yml. So, let's scroll down a little bit. Bunch of comments, but the important star stuff is already here for us. It's integrated it for us with the dashboard account that we created in those, that setup process, um, just by adding these values in here. It's also gone ahead and said, oh, you're using AWS. We know that means like we have to deploy it this way. We're also using Node.js, so we're going to make sure that it puts your code like that. And all the rest of the commented stuff doesn't matter until so you get right here to the uncommented stuff. And OK, we're making a single function, and it's going to reference a handler.js file. And inside of that, we're looking for the hello function that we exported. So with all of that information, we now know how to bundle it all up and set it all up. And serverless will just deploy it for us. So now we have this whole service completely spun up, and if we wanted to test it, um, we could do a few things. We could invoke it directly, or we could add some fun, cool stuff to it. So let's do that right now, and then we'll move on to the next section. So, all right, I want to actually add an event to it. So I want to add an API endpoint all by myself. So let's go ahead and say that we're just going to have this root path so we don't have a user's endpoint. I save this file. I'm going to deploy this one more time. I'll go back into my demo for it. That's me. There we go. So YAML's fun. Um, and uh, actually like YAML, but I don't know what I'm doing. So. Um, yeah, so, uh, so now we're doing it again. I won't make you watch this whole process. But basically what's going to happen, if I switch back to my demo, is it's going to finish deploying. We just uncommented this whole thing. And it's going to deploy the whole thing out again. And we're going to get this API endpoint that is right here. Um, and because we've set this configuration all up, it's automatically going to be set up with all of our um, code, and that'll be able to return some basic information for us. So when that finishes, I could take a look at it, but I'm not going to make you watch it. This is uh, essentially what it looks like when you finish this. You paste it in, you can curl it, and it's going to return some JSON for you that's already set up with your service. Cool. So now, congratulations, you just deployed an API. Uh, give, you, give yourselves a pat on that. That's, that's what it took. Um, so that's the first part, building like a very first demo project. But I'll, let's take a look at how we'd actually build something a little more interesting. So when it comes to demo projects, we can uh, find them in a lot of different places. There's, uh, there's blogs, there's uh, repositories of different demo projects actually that are hosted by my company. So if I took a look here at uh, serverless.com uh, slash examples to see if my Wi-Fi loads. You can search for any of these examples here and uh, find different projects ranging from integrating with bots like Alexa, different uh, cloud providers, uh, and a ton of other things like that. Um, there's also blogs that you can review that will just have the latest and greatest projects that you might want to try out depending on what your interests are. Um, so that will help you start coming up with an idea and finding examples and tutorials to do that. Uh, but what about coming up with your idea, like the thing that you really like that will give you the motivation to keep going and building your portfolio? Well, sometimes it feels like this, um, and it gets pretty difficult to pick something that you like. So I have a few suggestions on how to do that process. Uh, the first thing that I'd say to start is to pick something that you personally find interesting, uh, to pick something small and not be too ambitious that you'll never finish your project, because I think the bane of all portfolios is the quarter finished project that you were too ambitious on and never got to finish. And also to pick something somewhat familiar so that you're not trying to learn three frameworks simultaneously and breaking all of them in different and interesting ways. Um, so for some jump starting ideas to also help you think of those projects, I suggest taking a look at some real data uh, or finding a cool API that you'd like to use. Um, and also copying something cool. Uh, the code, not necessarily the credit for, uh, or the, the idea, not necessarily the credit for the code and uh, calling it as your own. Um, you can mix and match things, that's also great, but uh, don't try and copy explicitly and just throw it into your portfolio. Um, 
You can also uh, try and stretch, sketch something out. So if you want to design something just on paper, look at that and then start building that's another fun way. I'm far from a designer, so I can't speak to that. Yeah. Um, so some data sources that you can use, just a few quick suggestions. Uh, data.gov has a ton of open government data that you can use to power interesting projects that you're, uh, you're, you think are interesting. Academia has lots of things that they'll send out, so if you visit university websites, that's fun as well. Uh, but you can also generate it yourself. So, let's, uh, in addition to that, there's other like fun APIs, I'll put these links in my presentation, they'll give you like the RuPaul Drag Race API, and the Cats API, and you can return lots of pretty images of cats, and, uh, and drag queens, things like that. Um, so, as an example, uh, one of the first projects that I put in my portfolio, which will be an embarrassment today to show you, but I have decided to, uh, to grin and bear it. Um, so my idea was, you know what, I like landscape images. So I'm not a photographer, but they look pretty. So I'm going to get some cool landscape images, and then I'm going to process them for their dominant color. So if it's a, you know, a beautiful uh, ocean photo, I want to get that dominant blue out, because maybe if I take that blue and like the sand of the beach and the green of apparently whatever's green on a beach, um, then I can get a cool color palette to return and then style my website with just like this photo. So it'll look beautiful. Um, now, then I want to make an API to actually allow that. So I started with that landscape photography. I went to pexels.com and I downloaded some of those photos. Um, and then I ran it through just the library. I didn't do anything cool. There was somebody else wrote a library for me to do this. And it got me whenever I looked at those different images, these RGB values, which were dominant colors or non-dominant colors in the, in the photos. And then I turned that into JSON, and I stored that JSON somewhere, and put it in an openly accessible API. We could have honestly just copied and pasted this into that earlier example and just had it return this one. And um, once I did that, I made this really cool website. Thank you, JavaScript developers here, um, who really appreciate this. Um, this is not the most horrible color, uh, color profile that I've normally seen, so fortunately I got an OK one this time. Oh, OK, see, this is more like what I expect. Um, so, your projects won't always turn out as beautiful as you intend, um, but they're still fun, and that's, that's part of the point. Uh, so don't get discouraged if you have something that you're like, wow, this turned out weirder than I thought. Um, so let's take a second and just brainstorm your ideas for like two minutes and think about just fun projects that you wanted to work on. I have a little bit of time to set aside for that. Uh, so has anybody had like fun web-related projects that they wanted to work on? This is also an excuse for me to maybe come up to me afterwards to talk about them. And we can talk about that a little bit. Yes? A chat app. A chat app. Yeah, it's a great one, especially for serverless stuff, because it can really help you not have to deal with all that infrastructure, and they have integrations that work directly with services that help you do that. Yeah. Other ones. Yeah. Recipes. Uh, a recipe. A recipe. Yeah, a site or an API. I don't know. Anything like that. Cool. Yeah. Another great example. Back there, I think there was one. No, that was you. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Ooh. That sounds so fun. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah. These are fun ideas. See. So you've already started to see how easy that is to just come up with fun, weird ideas. For all of those, there is definitely a project that you can start building using some of this to help you save some, hopefully save you some time. Those are such fun ideas. Um, so I think I heard you guys say, uh, make a site to vote on different songs, right? Like that's, that's the idea I heard from, from over there. So we're gonna build a real project. Um, we're gonna call it Liberty JS Jams. Thank you for that suggestion from the audience. Um, and, and we're gonna use it to showcase some songs. Uh, and we're going to see vote totals on each song for how popular the songs are. Um, and we're going to be able to sign into the site and vote on each of those songs. And every time we refresh the page, we'll see the updated vote totals. So that's what we're going to try and build. Um, okay, so this is Demo Time Part 2, and we'll see how Demo Time Part 2 works as well. So, i run down here one more time. Okay, so let's go back over to our code. <laughs> this service deployed, look cool, we did it, and there's an APN. We're going to close that. We've got more fun stuff. Okay. Um, all right, so I actually already have a web server spinning here that's, that's hosting the front end just locally, so we can see it in a second. Um, but inside of this project, it's, it's kind of what more of a semi-realistic like, project would look like. It's less of just a single page with a single API endpoint and started to add some fun functionality. So let's peek at what happens here. 
Um, this is where the Python code I was talking about comes in. Uh, I did write it in the back end because I'm lazy, and uh, I write Python when I'm lazy. Um, but the front end has a ton of JavaScript that helps us interact with everything. So we've got some basic CSS that I'm not going to show you just because you'll see it when you see the site. Um, there's also a little bit of JavaScript here for both powering the application's front end to update some of the vote totals and make API calls. So let's take a quick peek at that in just a sec. Um, so really the most important stuff here is that I have already previously deployed this site and I put some API endpoints here so that the site knows where to go. There's lots of cool stuff you can do just to reference a custom domain, but for the ease of this presentation, I threw it in there. So whenever we want to make a vote, we're going to hit this vote, or excuse me, we're going to hit the vote endpoint whenever we do want to cast a vote. And when we want to get all the votes back about the different songs that we've looked at, we're going to hit the get votes endpoint. Um, so that's really the most important parts here. The rest of the JavaScript is really just stuff that's like, okay, cool, let's refresh the votes. Let's uh, vote for a song and call that API that we set up a little bit earlier. Um, when we're saying record votes, um, that's the exact same thing. I'm kind of doing the same thing to call a different API. And that's really all the 50 lines of JavaScript that I have in my application. The only other section is for authentication. Now, if you've heard of Auth0, it's a company that does, uh, does things to help people add authentication to their, to their front end applications. Um, I've gone ahead and added some public, don't worry, these aren't secrets, they're public things to configure um, your front-end application with Auth0. Um, and essentially, that's going to let me load in their libraries and then make some calls to actually log into a site. Um, the only thing I'm doing when I'm logging in, when I'm logging in is changing some of the UI. All right, so we'll stop there and I'll go over to what we're actually doing here. All right, let's open up this. All right, so I have this running locally. So this is our Liberty JS Jam site. Uh, and it's just a little bit of UI stuff, I apologize again. Um, but right now, we're not logged in, so I'm going to have to go over here. I might actually have to open this in another browser because I'm not logged in anywhere. Um, and when we log in, we're going to see the ability to vote. So let's give that a shot right now. Hopefully I can sign it. We'll have to make it happen. Let's see. So this is Auth0's little integration here. Um, you can sign up for an account. I'm going to try and sign up again. Hopefully they don't get mad at me. Okay, please tell me. There we go. Now it's happening. All right, I've signed up. So hopefully I'm a new user in this app. I have to do this. this I don't think it always happen if you're doing it. But now I just logged in. Hopefully my UI will refresh. We'll see. Yep, it did. So my UI just refreshed now that I've logged in. You see, we get a little icon here that's pointing to if I had a profile picture in Gmail or something. Uh, but right now it's just a music photo. And we just got a little more UI here. So now that we have that, we can vote on a song. So this is my favorite so far. Uh, I guess I do have all of them in the presentation. I forgot. So we can, we can pick out our favorite songs. Um, if you want to boost my audio, you can. But I know I said there was no audio, so it's my fault. <laughs> um, so we can listen to these different songs. We can decide which one uh, we think is the coolest. And then whenever we're ready, you know, we're pretty sure that Coderitis is our favorite, we're just going to vote on that. And once we're done voting, my website is very immature and thinks that I can vote as many times as I want. And whenever we refresh the page, it's going to go out back to that API, and it's going to collect the most recent vote counts. Uh, so now we see instead of 45, it is really small. It's now 61, so I voted a lot of times. Clearly, there's work to do in this application. Um, but the APIs powering this whole thing, this is the fun part, are only, and the JavaScript would be exactly the same. I'm not going to dig into all the details here, but they're only like 25 lines each. Uh, and JavaScript would be very similar. So that's the fun part that I wanted to show you in terms of how much work you have to do to get something real out. The front end is a little bit a little bit longer, but that's only because I have a bunch of elements. I'm not a pro, so I didn't use any frameworks or anything like that to, to simplify. So let me switch back to my presentation view. Oh, it's here. Okay. Let's wait. Let's see. Perfect. Um, are there any questions about that demo? I know I went through it really fast, so question. Where is it storing the counts? Great question, because I didn't cover that at all. Um, so when it makes an API call, what happens in some of that code is uh, we've also, in addition to deploying our API, if you look at this serverless.yml file, and we scroll down just a little bit, so we
But in addition to these functions that are processing the JSON that goes in and out of our API, we also have some resources, which in this case is a DynamoDB table which stores that information. Um, and then our functions go say, hey, table, can I have that info back? Uh, hey, here's some new information. So good question. Yeah, other questions about that? I won't dive a ton into DynamoDB because it's its own monster, and um, I don't want to make you listen to me talk about it. Um, but any other questions about that? Awesome. OK, well. Uh, did the demo go okay, or did it go okay? I'm gonna say it went great, but you can vote on that later. Um, so now that we're done with that demo, I don't have my speaker next anymore. Okay, I'll go over here. Um, so we need to show off your project, right? Uh, we, uh, I did have a demo. Um, so we need to show off your project now that you've built something like this out. So where do you show off your project? Well, we can do that in all the different places. We can build our own website, and if you decided to do that and post it on somewhere like AWS with a custom domain, that could be like $15. Or if you're extravagant and you want like a .xyz domain, it might be a little bit more expensive. Um, you can also put it on places like GitHub and just host it there. GitHub has GitHub pages, which has free hosting. But your own projects, sometimes they just don't need a front end, and you just host them in GitHub, and you have a readme file to explain what's happening. Um, there's also Netlify, which can host uh, free front ends as well for you and has some great features. So awesome, we just did that, we're done, right, with the whole presentation. Wrong. That is not what we're, we're done with. We need to actually help folks know what you did, because the doing of the demo was part of the work, but a massive part of the work is also helping explain it to people. So recently, I had this approximate uh, conversation come into me while I was at work. Um, they were saying, hey, we're having errors with the AWS Lambda after upgrading to Python 3.7. Pretend it's you no. Know. Um, do you know what's going on? Um, they sent me something that looked about like this, uh, and uh, that was my response. I have no idea. I don't know what this is. Um, and then I, you know, it took a second and did what all developers do. Um, and I didn't send this to them just to clarify. <laughs> uh, my company probably would not have liked that. Um, but you know, I took a look, and uh, well, lo and behold, when I Googled that, uh, that's my blog. Um, and it turns out that I had solved this issue before, and I had just forgotten completely that I had done that. Um, so my advice to you is to solve the same issue once and remember what you did, or in the better case, forget what you did, but have somewhere to find it later. Um, so you can be a reference both for yourself and for other people. Uh, for yourself is great because you'll have things like that happen, and for others it's awesome because you can help people learn uh, what they want to learn. Um, one more example. In 2016 I was a novice data engineer, and this is more of a for others example, and when I was trying to just get my basics down in SQL, uh, I needed to learn how to convert the thing on the left which is an epoch, into, like, I'm probably mixing the words up already, into an actual date-looking thing so I could show it to people and they would understand. Because most people look at 149627520 and they don't automatically think, oh, yeah, 2017, uh, June 1st, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not me. I don't know about you, you know, this table, maybe, but. Um, so uh, I Googled, and I read lots of documentation, and it was tough, but I learned how to do it eventually, and I wrote about what I learned in a post that let me just kind of clarify for myself. And I referenced this for myself a ton, and like, throughout the rest of the year and a half that I was working in that role, I was like, I gotta go back to this, because I've forgotten already. Um, and to this day, I could not tell you how to do this without referencing what I wrote. I couldn't just write it in, from memory. Um, it helps when I forget, because I just look it up. And it also remains uh, one of the most popular things that I've written on my personal blog because uh, it was from, in my opinion, the perspective of a beginner and didn't make any of the assumptions that experts make when they're trying to give people guidance. So what this really means is I think that you are the best person to document the things that you're learning. So if you're a complete novice in something, if you're just starting for the very first time and learning some framework or learning some tool, write yourself notes and publish them so you can keep them around and other people can learn from them. Um, so keep writing for yourself, because like me, you'll f maybe you'll forget or maybe you're not like me. Um, and for others, because you'll be able to help them learn. So that's it. I don't know what time it is, but whatever time is left, I have time for questions. Um, and thank you for, for bearing with me. If you have 
Um, any follow-ups that you'd like to chat with me? Uh, here are some references, and I also have my contact uh, information at that link right there. You can also say hi or hit me up on Twitter. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time.